I want to give you some easy ways to start thinking about monetizing your platform because sometimes getting started is all you need to do. Before COVID-19, before the beginning of 2020, I had started um, a little membership platform, really small and really easy, because people would ask me, how can we support what you do? And when I first got started, it didn't cost that much money, but as my email list grew and as my equipment needs grew and as the, the, the cost for the platforms grew, yes, it cost money for me to put out all of my resources that I was putting out for my passion, my podcast was the place that I started. And I created an account on a website called patreon.com. And that super easy allowed me to get online within 15 minutes, I was up and running. And I had a place where people who wanted to contribute to my expenses could do that. It was a, a way to support them. And more and more people would come and then I would, I would start saying, and I kind of felt bad about saying, but I, I got used to it. I said, hey, listen, there are some people who want to support the ministry and I've created this space on patreon.com to do that. If you would like to support the ministry, if the, if the content that I produce is a blessing to you, I invite you to go there and be a part of my inner circle. And that was growing just because I was mentioning it as I really started to believe that people wanted to support what I was doing while I worked in my passion, that it was a blessing to them. And by giving them a space on Patreon, it just became easy. Then there were people that didn't want to do this monthly membership. They were like, I just want to bless you. I want to bless you. I want to bless your family. I want to bless your ministry. And then I was thinking, okay, well, how can I receive their funds? So I started a separate non-personal, but a separate uh, PayPal account, just so that when someone would say that to me, I could send them a link where they could uh, share funds. And I'm, I'm not a nonprofit organization at this juncture. So this was allowing them to bless me, to bless my family, to bless my ministry for the work that I was doing. Here's the point about passion. When you start with passion, a lot of the time there are people that you are already blessing that if you gave them the opportunity to support you, whether that is just to give uh, in, on an easy place like Patreon or an easy place like PayPal, if you just open the door, people would, will come through it. I want I want you to understand that while all ministry does not have to be a business operation and while all ministry does not have to be for profit, the Bible does say that a person who works is worthy of their wages. And it is okay when you're putting your time and energy into producing products or content to give people a way to support you. Start with passion and know that when you're in your passion, you're a blessing to people and many people will want to support. So make it easy. I'm going to get into more details about other ways that we can develop ministry monetizing opportunities, but I wanted to start with Patreon and PayPal because really it's that simple. It can be that simple. Here are a couple of other things that I want you to know. Um, you want to choose a platform that's comfortable and easy for you. Now I'm going to give you some get started to monetizing your ministry tips. When I tell you though, I am going to give you the tip of the iceberg and it really is an iceberg that goes way down deep underneath the surface of the waters. You can, yes, yeah, start your own website and do it on WordPress and start a Squarespace and have a designer put it together and have a custom built portal for all of your things. You can, you absolutely can. But what I want you to know is that if you're trying to figure out how to monetize your ministry, starting simple can be a good thing because it allows you to grow in your ministry and in your content while your audience is growing and figure out exactly where you want to go as you grow. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want you to also think about the resources that you're making available, um, that those can be what's comfortable for you. Operate in your passion with your gifting and your skill set because you have time to grow. So if you're not comfortable on camera, I, I would suggest get comfortable on camera, but you don't have to do that today. You can start with your voice. That's what I did. I started with my podcast. Another way to monetize ministry that doesn't effecti effectively uh, connect you with your audience is if you're building, uh, for example, a podcast is to look into monetizing your ministry by having ads on your podcast. Um, I still to this day don't have ads. I don't know that I won't ever do that. Um, but right now that's just not something I've pursued, but a lot of my friends have. Jamie Ivy has ads on her podcast and there are many other people I listen to who are operating out of a love for God and a heart for ministry. And those ads support their, their content. So there are so many ways to keep it simple. Start where you're comfortable, open the door and then keep moving forward.
Here are three resources as you seek to figure out what your passion is that you can dive into that might help you think more critically about what I'm talking to you about right now. The one thing, it is a book that is revolutionary about you choosing what to focus on because if you're like me, you might be passionate about a few things. <laughs> Todd Henry wrote a book called Die Empty and it's the principle of putting all you have out on the table and living from a place of passion. That's another great resource. And if you just want something quick and easy to get started, I I want to encourage you to check out Jenna Kutcher's quiz. It's called What's Your Secret Sauce? Just to think about what makes your passion unique and special.